Hello guys and girls, Raj here, back with another video. A lot of you wanted me to make a video on CNI or Container Network Interface. So we are going to cover that topic in this video. We are going to start with what is CNI. Uh, then we are going to look at Kubernetes networking, pod and host networking. We are also going to learn about Amazon VPC CNI. Then the most important question, what do you do with CNI? Then we are going to look at Kubernetes networking policy. Uh, we are going to look at the CNI evolution, the latest and greatest pod security group. Uh, and finally, we are going to have a couple of words between uh, Kubernetes networking policy versus service mesh. As always, timestamps are given for your viewing convenience. This is a moderate to advanced video. You don't need to know what is CNI. I'm going to go over from scratch and explain all that. However, you do need to know uh, like Kubernetes basics, like what is Kubernetes, uh, what is a container, what is a pod. Uh, so if you want to check out for basic concepts, uh, check out my container playlist. I'll give the link in the description. With that being said, let's get started. Let's start with the big picture. At the end of the day, all you are trying to do is grab the container image from a container repository and deploy it in a cluster and run it as a container. So who does that for you? CRI or Container Runtime Interface does that task. So CRI pulls images from the repository and runs container. And some of the example CRIs are Docker, Rocket, CRIO, etc. And this is nothing to do with Kubernetes. This is simply container runtime engine. So it will work with, let's say, Amazon ECS, uh, where you have tasks. And within the tasks, you run your containers. And it will run for Kubernetes as well, where you have a pod. And then you can run containers within the pod. All right, so now that the containers are up and running, how do you access those? So let's say for Kubernetes, how does those pods get accessed, right? So when you try to access a pod behind the scene, it has to use the IP address. So each pod will have a IP address and that's how the pods are accessed. But remember, container runtime interface or CRI has nothing to do with IP address. All it does is brings your container up. That's where CNI or Container Network Interface comes into play. So CNI is an interface between Container Runtime Interface and the network. And it also configures the network routes. So how does it look like? So let's say you have a pod and for Kubernetes, each pod will have a unique IP address and we have the network, let's say you are the user trying to access the pod. And then within this pod, we have container runtime interface running. So this container runtime interfaces creates a container and then it calls CNI and says, hey, include this container into the network. And the ad that I am showing here, container network interface takes few commands such as add container, delete container, check container, etc. And this container network interface assigns the IP address to the container and then adds it to the network. So under the hood, the pod network has a lot going on. Each pod has an Ethernet link and then they're connected to virtual Ethernet link, they're connected to bridge, but we are not gonna go into those because in practical applications, you do not have to deal with what is ETA zero, what is a bridge, all that stuff. But what it means is, it is not as simple as just add the IP and then include into network. So all these under the hood components is handled by different CNI plugins. So when the container runtime says, add this container into the network, the CNI executes multiple plugins. 
such as execute bridge plugin, which creates a bridge, adds the container to it, executes IP VLAN plugin, which adds an IP VLAN interface in the container. It executes static plugin, which allocates the IP address to the container and some more. You can look at the list of CNI plugins in this GitHub address. One thing to keep in mind that CNI is not just for Kubernetes. Any container orchestrator system such as ECS, EKS, Apache Mesos, Docker Swarm, CNI works with all of them because at the end of the day, the container runtime interface is calling the CNI plugins to attach the container to the network. You can also go and contribute to CNI plugins and CNI plugins need to follow certain specification. It takes specific parameters and you need to support specific operations such as add, delete, check, and version. You can look at the specifications in this GitHub address. So now let's take a look at the most popular container orchestrator, Kubernetes networking requirements. So Kubernetes networking requirements are each pod gets its own IP and containers within a pod share network namespaces. So network namespaces as in the IP address. So if we look at this in a little bit detail, so you have the pod and the pod has an IP address. And if this pod has two containers, both of these containers will have the same IP address as the pod and they will be exposed using different ports. And these two containers can talk to each other using localhost. You can think of this as your desktop or laptop and different softwares in your desktop or laptop communicates each other using localhost because your computer has one IP address. So going back, all pods can communicate with all other pods without NAT or network address translation. Network address translation is the process of changing your IP address to an another IP address so the processes don't see the actual underneath IP address. That's not the case for Kubernetes networking. And all nodes can communicate with all pods without NAT. So you can have multiple nodes and they will have multiple pods and all those pods and nodes can communicate with each other and the IP of the pod is same throughout the cluster because we don't need to use a NAT. So these are the Kubernetes networking requirements. So any CNI that you want to use with Kubernetes, they have to follow these requirements. So what are some of the available CNIs? So we have Weaveworks, Calico, Antria, and this is the one that EKS ships with is Amazon VPC CNI plugin. So it is worthwhile to look at this Amazon VPC CNI plugin if you are using EKS. So for this VPC CNI plugin, pod IP is same throughout the VPC. Note that pod IP is same throughout the Kubernetes cluster, that's fine. But what this VPC CNI plugin does is it keeps it same throughout the VPC. So it's not just Kubernetes cluster. Anything within the VPC can access the pods using the same IP. This has native VPC networking, fast performance, and it is scalable. It has VPC features such as flow logs, direct connect, etc. And the latest and the greatest feature is it supports pod security group. More on this later in a couple of slides. And this is also open source supported by AWS. So note that you are not restricted to use this Amazon VPC CNI plugin. So if you provision a EKS cluster, by default, Amazon VPC CNI plugin will be installed, but you can install Weaveworks, Calico, Entria, or any other CNI which follows Kubernetes specification. Uh, however, the Amazon VPC CNI is supported by Amazon. Uh, so in case something goes down, you can get direct support from AWS support.
So moving on, another great advantage of Amazon VPC CNI custom networking is, let's say you have a VPC and you have a EKS cluster running. And in that VPC, let's say you have two subnets, subnet one. And in this subnet one, we have a node running. So under the hood, the node is basically an Amazon EC2 instance. And in that subnet, there are three free IP addresses available. And remember, each pod takes up an IP address. So let's say the three pods spin up within this EC2. Even though I'm not showing outside, but imagine these three pods are uh, uh, provisioned within this EC2. So now there are no free IP address available in this subnet. With Amazon VPC CNI custom networking, you can spin up more pods within this EC2 running in subnet one, but these pods can have the IP address of subnet two, which has plenty of available free IP addresses. So this is a great advantage. Uh, this is done using secondary network interface attached to EC2. Uh, there is a primary network interface and each network interface supports up to 10 IP address. Um, so the primary network interface supports the IP address from the subnet that EC2 is running, but the secondary network interface can have IP address from the subnet outside of the EC2 subnet. This also comes in handy uh, if your EKS cluster is running out of IP address, right? And you want to uh, expand it. So you can add a CIDR range to your VPC uh, create a subnet and then attach a secondary network interface for that subnet to the EC2 and that's it. E e your EKS cluster can have more pods. So now comes the million dollar question. Probably thinking, Raj, all this uh, CNI stuff, all the plugin is good, but all this already comes installed in my cluster. So what can I do with all this? So I work for uh, the world's most customer obsessed company. So I want you guys and girls to think like that as well. Not just study the theory, but always think, how can I help my customer or my application teams with this feature? So uh, let's solve that. Uh, so going back to our traditional uh, design, where we have a web server and database uh, running in pods, and let's say this is a multi-tenant cluster. You have web server one and the database for one application. And then this web server two is also trying to access this database, but they should not be allowed to. But remember, Kubernetes network specification says any pod within the cluster can access any other pod. So since this is a multi-tenant cluster, uh, the pods within the same cluster can access any pod within the cluster. So what you can do with CNI is you can define network policies. Since CNI can see the IP addresses, you can create network policies with rules. I only want to allow traffic from web server one to this database and not allow anything else such as web server two traffic. So how does it look like? Uh, the Kubernetes network policies, the kind will be network policy. And under the spec, uh, the pod selector match labels means that uh, this network policy will be applied to any pod where the labels will be of role database or DB. And the policy types are ingress and egress. So ingress is for incoming, egress is for outgoing. And the ingress said only allow traffic from the IP CIDR range 172.17.0.0/16, except 172.17.1.0/24. Right. So include everything unless they are in this slash 24 in this specific slash 24 range. Also, the pods that are trying to come in they have to be in the namespace where the label is project, my project, and they have to have the role front end. So that's how you 
restrict only specific applications uh, to access your pods. Similarly, for egress, you are only allowing the traffic out to this IP block 10.0.0.0 slash 24. But what if a resource does not expose IPs? So in our previous example, uh, all the pods have IPs, so networking policy uh, can use those IP addresses. But what if your Kubernetes cluster is trying to access an RDS database and RDS doesn't give you any IP address? So you can say, Raj, uh, I can make sure only the application that needs to uh, access this RDS runs on a specific nodes or EC2s and uh, all the other pods for the other projects runs on separate EC2s and then I'm going to put a EC2 security group on those applications and then restrict access to RDS, right? Using the node security group or EC2 security group. But it gets pretty complicated because uh, to uh, schedule pods in specific nodes, you need to use taint and it gets quite complicated as the cluster scales uh, and in reality, pods are mixed and matched. So in the same node, you can have pods of different applications running. If you want to restrict traffic uh, from this pod of this node and uh, this pod of this node, then the EC2 security group is not gonna do it, right? Because all the pods within the EC2 will follow the EC2 security group. And if you prohibit the traffic, then even this pod, which is uh, which should be allowed to access the RDS, won't be allowed to access. So this is the newest EKS uh, VPC CNI feature, which is pod security group. So in this case, each pod can have a separate security group. And using this security group, you can restrict traffic uh, to other AWS services. So this is fantastic for security control in multi-tenant cluster. And also you can control network access from pods to outside cluster AWS services. And again, this is included in Amazon VPC CNI. So if you uninstall Amazon VPC CNI and install other CNIs like Calico and Tria, you won't be able to access this pod security group. And this also makes it easier to migrate your application from EC2 to EKS uh, because then you can pretty much copy the security group from your EC2 and apply it to the pod security group. Okay, so the last thing I wanted to touch about is difference between network policy that we learned and service mesh. Uh, I have a separate service mesh video, by the way. If you are not sure what is service mesh, I'll give the link up top, uh, check it out. So think of it as network policy can see the IP address, right? So it can work on OSI uh, layer three and layer four, the port as well. Whereas service mesh works on more like layer seven. It cannot see the IP address, uh, but it can see the application layer headers, all that stuff. So one good way uh, to think of it as a network policy is more like network load balancer and service mesh is more like application load balancer, which it can do more with the application headers. Service mesh can do a bunch of things such as rate limiting, throttling, circuit breaker, uh, proxy to proxy security, tracing, all that stuff that network policy enforcer cannot do. All right, guys and girls, that's the video. If you find this video useful, Please do all the YouTube stuff, uh, like this video, uh, subscribe, uh, comment. Also, actually, in the comment, let me know if there are other questions that's in your mind for Kubernetes that you want me to go over. All right, guys and girls, that's it for this video. I'll see you guys and girls in the next video. Bye.